Welcome to this look at a new mod map on Farming Simulator 22 with me, Mr. Sealy P. I'm here on Piramberus map. This is by Carlos JC, Eclipse and Team IWMM, 224.48 megabytes to download. It's based in the northeast region of Brazil, with a little bit of imagination. The map looks like this. Now, You'll see as we go around, we actually start here at the vehicle store. Uh, the farm we own, if you come onto a new farmer, you own that plot. That's all you own. There are no contracts available. This is all fields, just fields. If you want crops, you've got to plough it. You've got to do whatever you need to do. Um, you need to own the land, obviously, to be able to do that. Field prices vary. Let's just say that. Uh, 428,476. There are some smaller plots, 127. Here's the kicker. This section down here, the verges, the periphery, whatever you want to call it, is 9,787,248. That plot contains all of the cell points. We'll get to that in a little while. Um, the other thing I'm going to say now, actually, it's one thing I'll say, um, more than one thing. Water you can get from anywhere in rivers or lakes, it says. So anywhere there's water, you can pretty much get water. Now, I have found, and I know sometimes I do map tours, I repeat the same thing over and over again. It's very forced in the route you have to take around the map, or the routes you have to take around the map. Because, bear in mind the vehicle stores here, and the main farms there, the route, the official route, runs all the way out, all the way around there, all the way around there, and all the way back to get to the farm. Now, I'm going to cut across, I'm just saying. But then when you come south from there, down to all these points, the route's out to each one. It doesn't follow a circuit, so you've got to go out to those, then come all the way back, then out to those, then come all the way back. There's a lot of out and back and out and back. So some of these I will be going on foot cross, across to them. And when we get out to here, there's a lime station and debris crusher and quarry. Again, it's all the way out, all the way back. And in places, there are some points where you think, OK, well, I can just nip across. It's like the map makers have deliberately made it so you can't. You, you can't make a shortcut. You can't put a shortcut in. That, I mean, it's down to the map makers to whatever they want. I'm just saying that's the situation. Um, slot count is 1,116 on New Farmer. On Farm Management Start From Scratch, it's 936. The difference being, on New Farmer, we start with Sleep Trigger, a couple of sheds and buildings here, and all the start machinery. On Farm Management Start From Scratch, you don't. No buildings, no machinery, nothing at all. So then it's just a case of buying up whatever you need to buy. So, we start, like I say, at the vehicle store. Lovely view overlooking a little lake here. What I do like as well is it's not that blue because you've got the the um, ground around is that very red sort of that we've seen a lot of Brazilian maps red red sort of ground. The water's got that kind of murky brown sort of look to it. It fits. Now I say uh, uh, apart from the out and back, the map itself, the landscape, the terrain, the way it's done, the um, sort of mountainous areas, and it's brilliant. It, it really is very well done. And some of the views and stuff are amazing. I'm going to grab the, the John Deere we, we've got here. We'll look at the start equipment. So I've done that in a moment. The vehicle store is just here. And there's a loading point over there. There's no workshop here. The workshop trigger is elsewhere, which we'll get to. Now, a lot of these areas that have got big wide open spaces, you need to buy that verges for 9.7 million to be able to put stuff down. That's the downside, I think, personally. It's a lot of money. If you're only going to buy up certain plots and certain bits, again, we'll get to that later on because that gets a little bit more complicated. Um, we do start with a forklift. That's over here as well. These two vehicles are at the start, as is that trailer, and a couple of IBCs and containers. Now, this map has 20 collectibles. I haven't found one yet. There are no animals off the start. Like I said, there's no contracts available. Um, Actually, now's probably a good time to talk about the stuff that's put in. Coffee is on this map. So if we look at, let's go into here. 
like I said, 1116. If we go down to look at our start machinery, we've got a John Deere and a Valtra, two small tractors. We've got a Rossell Mash Nova 330 harvester. We've got a small AEB mower. Pickup, we're going to use later on. We've got a cramp trailer. Headers, or header, for the Rossell Mash. We've got a plow, seeder, sprayer, fertilizer spreader, front loader gear, the low loader you've just seen and some weights. Now if we keep going down, go to here, mods and DLCs, and click on that. What's been added in by the map maker, we've got a fillable pallet. Now along there, you've got coffee from the fields, from your crops, and roasted coffee beans. We've also got the Browd 1990X coffee harvester. So that's been put in specifically for doing coffee on the map, which is brilliant. If we come back out and we go into build mode under sheds we've got nothing where what, what did we have i'm trying to think there's nothing under any of these under production we had some buildings so we got the coffee roasting building and we got the premium coffee production we've then got the sale points a few here that have been added in to be able to buy roasted coffee coffee and the premium coffee so these sale points are specific to this map for that reason uh, nothing under greenhouses but under orchards this is how you get your coffee now i know i did the other map that had coffee on it and people loads of people put in the comments how do i do coffee that that's what i'm showing and i showed it on that previous one i'm going to show it here so the same as you do grapevines or you do olive groves you do coffee plantations exactly the same on here so obviously i can't do it here i don't own the land but i'll show you when we get up to the main farm when you click on it you click drag drag out your coffee um plantation vines and then you harvest them mulch them fertilize them exactly the same way as you would do with grapes or olives and then you harvest using that harvester um, and then we'll get on to what happens with that later on. Uh, nothing under generators. There was nothing under animals or... I don't think there was anything under decoration. No, but what there is a lot of under landscaping, under painting textures, we've got flagstones, concrete um, slabs, the sort of red colour rough sand textures. There's quite a few different extra textures put in here. Then under trees, we've got a load of trees from there onwards specific to the map and then plants as well hang on plants as well if we go th that way there we go starting from there load of stuff put in including various different grasses as well meadow grasses thrown in so there's a lot of stuff been put in by the map makers uh, we're going to grab the tractor and let's head around like I say we are going to um, kind of shortcut a little bit I would say the wild north of the map is well worth exploring. Go you know, have a drive up, it's it's amazing. I'm not going to do the entire route round because that would take 20 minutes of the map tour. What I am going to do is drive down here first of all, then I'm going to cut across. But just to say, weirdly, um, it feels very Jurassic Park. It's got a real kind of prehistoric feel, open fields and plains and rocky outcrops and sweeping ground with the red land and then you've got these large lakes and ponds and rivers and stuff everywhere you can just imagine massive dinosaurs coming down to the water in the hole it's weird i don't know what made me think of it it's just as i drove out on the first sort of look around the map i thought whoa okay fantastic park filter very cool uh now like i said there are some points where taking shortcuts it's almost like it's designed specifically not to let you <laughs> like this but we are going to do it anyway because it's going to be far quicker and easier to get across here and I'll come back the same way in the pickup vast open spaces plenty of room for making your own fields creating your own fields you, you know you can still put production chains and stuff out here some places it would work fine anyway other points you might need to do a bit of landscaping for it to work but you know that being said it will still work it's a bit of um what's something i was going to say it's it's a i would say before other oxymoron taylor two cities there are 
loads of points in this map where it feels brilliant and it flows naturally and it looks great and the colour palette and the texture palette and the lighting is fantastic. There's a few bits where I've got to I thought, oh, okay, it feels a, a bit kind of forced and other bits where it just blends really, really well when you've got your buildings and stuff put in. You'll see as we go around, but like I say, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not knocking the map makers, I'm just saying what I've got, kind of come across. So here, we've got a couple of buildings and our start machinery. Like I say, on Farm Manager and Start From Scratch, you haven't got these buildings or the machinery. I'll show you where we've been on the map when we get there. We've had a look at the machinery that we start with already, but this is where it all is. And what I'll do now is, because we own this bit of land on New Farmer, I'll show you what I mean about the coffee. Go to production, go to orchards, go to there, click on the start of my vine, drag it across, and stop. That's my coffee. That will need to be mulched, it will need to be ploughed, it will need to be fertilised, and then your coffee will grow. Use the coffee harvester to take the coffee off, and then that can be transported off for other productions. So that's how you will do your coffee. Put it down just like grapes or olives. Up the hill. We own all this land to start, so we've got a bit of, uh, say, grassland. Needs to work. And we do start with one field. Right up the hill, we've got our sleep trigger, our wardrobe. Again, on farm management site from scratch, you don't own this. It's not here, the building's not here at all. Gives you scope to put in whatever you want. Sleep trigger's there. Pickup's in here, as is the wardrobe trigger. So we're going to grab the pickup while we're doing that show where we are. So we started here at the main machinery store, we went out and there, took a little bit of a fork around just to have a look at the Jurassic Park, Jurassic World. We then cut across here to there, we've come down here and we're at the main farm. Now the thing is I thought well, we could go out across, there's lots of fords where you cross out into the large grass areas but they are all very separate. A lot of these waterways are too deep, you can't ford. I don't doubt if you own the plots of land, we've got a lot of bridge mods available. You could probably put bridges in if you wanted to, to make life a little bit easier. And possibly even across some of these waterways, you could put some bridges in. So in coming out here, across this field, and maybe across here, might work a little bit better. But anyway, we're going to go back the way uh, intended, sort of. Pick up will be a little bit quicker to get around. Let's get around and take in all of the cell points as well. I wonder if we can cut across there. Probably not supposed to. I, start, I don't want to beach the pickup and then it would be a problem. That's really steep there. Okay, we could. That's alright. So rather than going up and out, we're going to cut back across here. Follow a route round and get across the river. Even like all the, the foliage and stuff, it feels very. I don't know. I don't know just I'm thinking prehistoric. I mean, I've been watching. I watched all the Jurassic Park films recently. There's a brilliant thing I don't know if you, on the uh, Disney Channel called Light and Magic about the history uh, about, of industrial light and magic. I watched all of those and the amount of films and stuff they did. And I thought, oh, I'm going to go and watch Jurassic Park. And I've watched all of them um, over the space of a few evenings. I've watched through them. Um, that's probably why it's on my mind. To just. But this kind of just fit, really. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> continuing on. <laughs> We're going to get to a bridge. There's a few bridges like this around the map. A little bit bumpy in places, so be careful taking these at speed. You don't end up dropping off the edge. And uh, yeah, you're going to be in trouble. You can reset, but. You don't want that to happen, really. We turn left into here. We've got restaurants, pizzeria, and fast food restaurant just here. Now, I'm going to check something at this point, because I, when I did my kind of quick whiz round, I tried to do something, and I was horrified. And this may be the same. I'm going to try it here now. Where's the... Uh Oh, that's just a cell point, isn't it? Production chain. Oh, these three are all just cell points, aren't they? I have to wait till I get to a production chain to do it. Yeah, they're just cell points. 
not production chains. Um, yeah, you'll see when we get there. It'll make more sense. I'm talking in riddles at the moment. So, we've got to drive out now. Because we're going to head to the sawmill first. I am going to do a bit of a shortcut, but again, I'm worried. I'm going to get, um, I'm going to beach myself, but we'll see how we get on. So we're heading right out to the southwest corner of the map, to the sawmill. And the biomass heating plant, I think. So I say, for those people that, look, that, you know, it makes the map feel much bigger because you're forced to take these long routes out and some of them are winding and I do like the up and down nature of the map, you know, the different elevation changes, it's very well done. For people that like to work out shorter routes, because again, if you haven't got a lot of time to play the game, if you're doing a harvest and you've got to drive half an hour to get to your sell point, people will often try and find shortcuts and ways to get there quicker. I, I totally understand that. So, sawmill is here. Let's see if it will do it for this. To every single time. So, oh no, that's I buy sawmill 100,000. I wonder why it's done that then. I'll show you when we get there. So, sawmills. Hmm. It was to do with buying the biogas plant. I was absolutely horrified. But that's showing that that's okay. Biomass heating plant is down here. That's just a sell point, generally for wood and wood chips is normally what the biomass heating plant will take. So what I'm going to do now, this is a bit dodgy, I'll show you on the map. So where we are at the moment here, we've done sawmill and biomass heating plant. Now the next sell point I want to get to is there, farmer's market. But to do that by road, I'd have to go all the way back around there, all the way back to that junction there, then come all the way back out to there. So just in the aid of trying to get through the uh, map tour a little bit There we go, right, we got over there. Farmer's Market is just here. Like I say, you're not supposed to do that, but I just thought it'd be quicker and easier to get around. Farmer's Market sell point is just there. Then if we continue around here, we've got the gas station. Get through a second. Gas station is just here. There's an electric charge point just there. And this is where the workshop is. So there's no workshop trigger at the main machinery store, but the workshop is here. I like that. That's a nice feature. I also like having that vehicle being worked on. I said there's a lot of details on it. Really, really good. So from here, I'm going to continue going east now. We've got a placeables point. And there are three points on here that I want to show you. Hang on. So, buying the verges, hang on, does that, but it leaves that point there, that point there, and that point there. That's a quarry we'll get to later on. This one here is a placeables point, which will set you back 183,638. Um, that one there is a point, that's what, there's two sheds there and there's a track but weirdly the map doesn't show it from here there's a track that runs out to there so you can buy that little plot with a couple of sheds on it if you want to and like i say the other one over there's the quarry so that there that's a we well, can put production chains down there whatever you want it's sent up to you but there's a placeables point just there from here i am actually going to go i think i'm going to go on foot here Oh no, that's not following the route, it's going to go. It's okay. We go north first. Out here. So, just side there, we have got the... What was this one? Top? Oh, no. Just checking my list. Supermarket. I've done it the wrong way around, haven't I? That's the supermarket itself, but it's all right. It's big like that because it's all kind of winding backwards and forwards. I think I've just gone to route around. Right, so that's supermarket, just there. Now we're going to Top Grains. Now Top Grains, again, it's been done in such a way that you're, you are actually on this one forced to go a certain way. And you'll see, whoa, sorry pedestrian. 
apologies. So if you come this way, the barrier won't open. Um, it's designed in such a way that you come around here, all the way around there, into top grains and then out this way. So if I drive up to it, there's no way of opening that barrier up. It doesn't open. If I drive up to it, it doesn't happen. So I, I'm going to skirt around it again just for expediency. We'll see as we get around there. There we go. So it'll open that way if we're driving out. So this is the top grains cell point. Just in here. Out the other way. We do have at various different locations, way stations, as you can see. And we go in and out of these various different places. Back to the main track. Trying to think, what's it going to cut across here? I'm trying to, where was it? I oh, don't no, remember now. It's got Vini grains. I've put on my notes on foot. That was because I was going to follow this route round and then just cut across to get to it. Again, the roads are all linking it all up. I think I was going to go from about here. Yeah, just stop there whiz out through the undergrowth <laughs> so the road comes in there and there's a little bit through here but this is Vinnie Grains again route for this we'd have to come all the way to there all the way down there all the way up there then into Vinnie Grains and back out again so I thought it'd just be, uh, be a bit quicker to do that That cell point's just in there, that side of the building. I'm going to hop back to the pickup and we shall carry on. Okay, from here then, continuing on. We're going to go. Um, I'm going to go down to the marketplace. So marketplace sell point is down the bottom here. I'm just really worried of missing something. There you go. There's your marketplace sell point. Now that little track I was saying about that takes you out to that placeables point. I think it's just up here. If I recall correctly, it's not showing on the map, but it's just here. So that other little plot you can buy, it's just here with a couple of buildings in it, on it tucked away right back out and next left so this is um is it Marola? it's Marola Barrett is open Jump back to the map so we can see. So we just put it down there. We've come up here, up there. Yeah, Marola Bales is just here. So that's a bale cell point. I'm going to go through the fence here, through the gap. There is a gap. I can go through there. This is your cotton cell point. Um, so this is Coopim cell point, which is just for cotton, not for wool. You get to it just along there. I turned in that way. If by vehicle, we come that way. But again, I thought I'd do it on foot. This is the other thing I really, really like is, you know, that old Brazilian um, Spanish influence around a lot of the places. We've got a lot of these old brick stone buildings that you feel have been there a very long time, you know, old Spanish families. And that, I don't know, it, it, it works. It really does work very well. From here. flooded point just there and then again it's a little bit of a drive just 
kind of going. I'm going this way, I think. Let's just let's just go with it. I'm sure I'll work out where I am in a minute. Down here we come to the animal dealer. Again, stone building. Feels old, like it's been here a long time. This is actually tucked away. You might get onto here and because the icons for the actual cell points don't quite match up on the map. The icon shows it being just here, but the actual dealer, animal dealer point. It's just round in here, your dialogue box is tucked around here, hidden just inside the building. I say hidden, but that, that's where it is. It felt hidden when I was looking for it during the, the initial preliminary look round. That's your livestock market. Uh, from here, oh yeah, right, now we've got a bit of a drive. But again, it's, um, I like the way it's been done. It, it, it's, and the landscape is, it's stunning, I'm not going to, I'm not going to like, So, we're I mean, looking up with that, look. It's just fantastic. On the drive back, I will skip a bit of this coming back because it's quite a drive back, but I want to sort of show the drive out, at least. Now, down over the bridge again, be careful. We've got a few switchbacks up and then the switch backs down we're going up over the side it feels almost like a volcano it's kind of we're going up and over and into the caldera kind of thing it's got that feel to it so this is where the lime mine lime quarry is we've got a lime station and a debris crusher let's come down the other side oh. Like I say, it's a bit of a track, but it's well worth it when you get it. So the line point and debris crusher is just around the corner here. Now interestingly, the debris crusher is for rock. And if you get the modded ones, the debris crusher will take rock and turn it into lime. The quarry is a lime quarry, not a stone quarry. I thought with the debris crusher being there, it would have been a stone one. If we come up here, this was that third point I said, a uh, small little bit you can buy. Come up here, we've got a huge lime mine, lime quarry just here. Now, the price is probably commensurate with the fact that there's a lot there and you can probably make a tidy bit of money. That's 245,851 to buy that. But then I think the money you were probably making selling lime, you would easily make that money back. It's going to take a bit of time, a bit of work, and obviously you have to find a sell point for your lime. Because that point down there, that's a lime station, not a lime sell point. And the debris crusher takes stones, so you have to transport your lime out of here to get anywhere. Now, obviously, say so obviously, uh, we came from the livestock market, we came all the way out here, we've done all that drive all the way out here, uh, we're at the quarry, so I've got to do all that drive all the way back to get to where I'm going to go to next, Sugar Mill, I think. Yeah, uh, so I will see you back there in a moment. I think we're the correct turning. Hope so. <laughs> and this is again, this is a really impressive building. The way it's been done and set up and blends in with the landscape around it. It's a big facility. So this is a Media Media Sugarcane Mill. You can tell what the predominant industries in the area are, can't you? I mean, it's it's brilliant. It's so well done. We've got these lagoons here, um, which you'll also see when we get around to the biogas plant and ponds and rivers. It all, yeah, it's good. From here, back out, out towards the biogas plant. We'll get there, don't worry. We've got a whole cluster of cell points as well down in the southeast corner of the map, which we're going to head to. That's where the coffee roasting facility is and the premium coffee facility. We'll get to those. Just 
let's find my way out. I think the next right is how we want. Yep. Just down here. No, again, it was that kind of... I came down here thinking, oh, that's cool. The, uh, sh the um, sugar cane mill is just to that side. But it's all fenced in all the way around it, so you can't actually... You can't cut into there. You have to go around the route round. But so I've got a lagoon there, lagoon there, and another one over there. We go across here. We've got the sugar mill just there, and then the biogas plant is just here. Now this is where I had an issue. So I thought, oh, I'll check out the biogas plant. Now it is, it is a standard biogas plant in what it takes. It is 24 cycles per month, and it does your regular sugar uh, biogas plant things. But here was the thing. When I clicked on it to buy it, it came up saying 11,287,248. Now, I don't have enough money. Of course I don't. That, when I did it off camera to check it, um, that bought the biogas plant and all of that. So the price was 11 million because you're paying for the biogas plant and all of that. It's not separate. And I don't know why it's not separate. The only... So the only plus, if you've got a spare 11 million knocking around to do the biogas plant, the plus to it was, because it bought the biogas plant and all of the land, it enabled me to put down silage clamps. Because here at the biogas plant, there are no silage clamps at all. Um, so once that was done, I was able to test fit and place a couple of small silage clamps along here, along the flat bit, um, I personally think that should be separate. The biogas plant, if you want to buy the land before you start your Let's Play, great. But to spend 11 million buying the biogas plant, I mean, I think what a lot of people would, would be more likely to do would be to get a smaller plot of land or a plot of land you already own and then put a placeable one down. Unfortunately, um, that will kind of preclude people from doing it. I mean, it might not. People might just say, oh, you know, I'll just cheat in some money and I'll do it. It's not a problem. Um, but it just, yeah, I think those should be separated. That's just a personal opinion. But it's a lot of money. So from here, we're heading to the southeast corner now. Up over the top, and again, it, it's great. The, the the detail, the route. It, it, you know, it's not going to be easy. There's a lot of the routes around, especially to the north of the map, that are like this. If you're towing trailers with a lot of loading them some of these are going to be struggles you know it's not going to be straightforward as we come down into this industrial park production chain cell point area we've got carpentry and we've got a great processing unit in the corner here we've got our coffee roasting facility just here so by this we'll set it back 80,000 so what I'm going to do now uh, off camera I did it but to show you this is what the production chain looks like. So the coffee roasting, uh, it runs 6,480 uh, 6, cycles per month. It will take your coffee and turn it to roasted coffee with a one-to-one -one ratio. So you don't lose anything. So you take your coffee beans off of the coffee plants that we've already seen, bring it here, roast it. Now you can sell it at that point. You can sell the coffee as it is, straight off the plants. You can sell the roasted coffee from those cell points we talked about earlier. So you can roast it here, sell that if you want to or you can take the roasted coffee from here and then we'll go to the next points and I'll show you we've got bakery just there oil mill just there tailors just there and right in the far corner we've got the grain mill over there this one even though it says oh no hang on no I was going to say golden field grain mill golden field coffee premium this is your coffee facility. So if you're taking your roasted coffee over there, you bring it here to make a premium coffee. This will cost you 96 grand. And again, I'm going to put a screenshot. So the production chain itself uh, will take your roasted coffee and make it into premium coffee. It's a six to four ratio. So you're losing a little bit. A third. Yeah, you're losing a third of it. Um, your roasted coffee to make your premium coffee. It's not the end of the world. 3,600 cycles per month. And then when your premium coffee comes out, and you'll get your premium coffee here, you can then take it on to whichever cell point to take it and sell your premium coffee. And that is the map. We came from the lime quarry all the way back down here, and we did the sugarcane mill. We then came from the sugarcane mill 
and we came out down there to the biogas plant and sugar mill. We then came from there, went all the way out to these cell points clustered down here, which has got your coffee roasting, your premium coffee and the other cell points around it. And that's the map. Like I say, to the north, I would absolutely urge you, have a drive round, have a look. It's incredible. Um, the landscape is stunning. It's not going to be easy getting stuff around. We've got a couple of logging areas here for forestry. That's all part of the, the verges. So if you do want to buy that, you can. And there's another one there for forestry as well, should you want to do it. Um, yeah, that's my Carlos and JC, Eclipse and Team IWMM. I hope you found this useful and informative in some way, shape or form. If you have, please give us a like. If you don't subscribe yet, please do. If you want to leave a comment, feel free. And if you want to share this video, then please be my guest. Whatever you should choose to do, as always, thanks for watching.